John, good to see you. So it, it seemed to me like the big theme uh, for yesterday was differentiation through silicon. Yes, the iPhone SE to yeah. me as a product is, is more defensive, but even that, the price is higher because uh, apparently they think people will pay for, for, for performance. And then iPad Air, the Max, I mean, expensive stuff, but pretty unique in the performance capabilities, right? Yeah, I, I, I definitely think that in some ways, what they announce is what's ready. And is there really a narrative thread between the iPhone SE all the way to this Mac Studio, which is for serious professionals? If there is, it's the Silicon story. And and they're flexing, you know. And so you've got a $500-ish iPhone SE that has as good performance of any phone on the market, whatever brand, uh, and now you've got this, uh, the Mac Studio with the display, you know, that's that's a starting point of $3,600, $3,700. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a very expensive computer. Yeah. And, and that's just the starting point. And, and I guess the upside there is they don't expect that to be high volume. So in an environment where you've got right. supply chain issues, right, they can make those margin dollars potentially with these right. products without having to ship a whole bunch of them. But overall, I think we might be in a period where for Apple investors in particular, there's a shift from the services thesis that they were trying to get us to focus on. Remember when they stopped reporting those iPhone unit numbers to now more of a silicon thesis. If you think Apple's got sustainable advantage over the next three to five years, it's based on silicon innovation across the product line, the existing product line, and then perhaps in AR as well, if we see that product. Yeah, and I think that with the Mac Studio in particular, you're looking at it, it's the same footprint as the Mac Mini that you know that Apple's been selling for for many years now, just a little bit higher. But it's a tremendous amount of performance in a footprint like that, and no other computer company is making uh, a, a, a desktop computer that fits in a tiny little form factor like that. And the thing that they did that is very unusual for Apple is they even hinted that the Mac Pro is still to come. And I think they almost had to because the performance of the Mac Studio is so great that it would have left people thinking, is this the new Mac Pro? Is, did they just rename it, put it in a smaller <laughs> footprint? So they explicitly called that out because I think people would have reasonably thought this must be the new Mac Pro. I, that's hilarious. I mean, it sort of dovetails with um, what Morgan Stanley said this morning. And, that, and, and this sort of reflects the general take on the sell side today. And that was the product, uh, they, they were in line with expectations. But as Katie Huberty wrote, it illustrates the unmatched output of their R&D engine, which is $26 billion, um, to, the, to your point, where even, even uh, products that aren't supposed to be marquee end up looking marquee. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and then I think the other side is the operations, you know, where, where with the supply chain issues that have been plaguing the entire industry for years now, uh, Apple is putting their top A15 chip, the best phone chip they have, into their consumer-priced iPhone. That's, that's a total operations flex in terms of uh, something that is going to be high volume.